What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into Action Comics with Superman issue number 1040. And if you have not been keeping up with everything going on in Action Comics, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything going on in this series. And what we've seen so far is Superman is fighting in the Glatoral Arena. For the longest time, he has been getting his butt kicked. That is, until he went to the one known as Cryo Ux, the Philosian that is an offshoot of a Kryptonian. And so, with Clark Kent now learning how to fight in these arenas, things are starting to turn into his favor. Be sure to buy the comics, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue of Action Comics, we are picking up with Superman in the arena, with him learning to fight just a little bit better, with the other gladiators willing to help him out just a little bit more. They are starting to win more and more battles. And as Superman goes through all of these battles day in and day out, some days it gets harder and harder to remember that he is Clark Kent. His life has become so chaotic, so unfamiliar, that sometimes he almost forgets that that is his name, that that is what people used to call him. On this planet, they call him the Unbloodied Sword. This is a taunt for someone who can never land a blow. Another thing he has come to realize is that freeing Warworld is going to be much harder than he ever truly anticipated. Because these people, they have been brainwashed from the youngest of ages, believing that Mongol is the one to aspire to. That is the person that you want to be. And that kindness, kindness is nothing more than weakness. And weakness on War World, it gets snuffed out. But Superman hasn't lost all hope. There are still those that remember a time before War World. People that still remember what freedom is. And so Superman, he has hope. Hope that he can light the spark and get these people to revolt. Superman is also aware that with his victory, some of these gladiator slaves, they have started to find that hope. And if Superman has noticed this, that means Mongol has as well. And so with the horn being blown, we see Mongol come into the arena. With two Arphalosians sitting here in the arena, everyone is forced to drop to their knees. Being electrocuted, we have Otha Ra and Azul Ra. These are two of the offshoot Kryptonians. And when Superman talks about brainwashing, this is exactly what he means. Because these two, seeing Mongol, they feel honored in his presence, saying they strive to be exactly like him, that they wish to be Warzoon. Mongol looking down at them, he tells the sister, if you truly want to be, then kill your brother right here, right now, just like I did. And then looking to the brother after the sister does not kill him and says this is your opportunity. That if you truly want to be part of this tribe, kill your sister right now and you will become Warzoon. And you can see it in his eyes. He truly looks like he is about to kill his own sister. That is until Superman intervenes, charging in and knocking Mongol off balance. Getting back up to his feet, we see the fight between Superman and Mongol. And while Superman, he is definitely better trained, he definitely knows how to fight, he is still no match for Mongol, not without his powers. And so while Superman, he gets his hits in, Mongol is able to put him down in the dirt. And though Superman, he may be defeated, the crowd begins chanting, Unbloodied Sword. They are cheering for Superman, because even though he lost, he stood against Mongol. Superman letting him know that he may think these people belong to him, but pretty soon, they are going to show you that they don't. And with Mongol leaving the battlefield, 
he has a discussion with Che Till, and he asks Mongol why you don't just kill Superman right here on the spot. Be done with it for his insolence against you. But Mongol knows that if he kills Superman this day, that it will only make him a martyr. The only problem with this is every day he is alive, it is a absolute defiance against Mongol. And so the longer Superman lives, the more the words and whispers of rebellion hide in the shadows. But Mongol is also keeping him alive for what he has planned against the United Planets. And if Superman is dead, then he cannot use his plan correctly. He needs Superman as leverage. Taking us elsewhere, we are picking up with Omak. And right now, Omak, she is being taunted. With the minions of Mongol wanting her armor and technology, they are willing to bargain with her. Letting us know that Orphan and Darling, they have the capability to bring White Ray back. And so the bargain, it would be Omak's armor for White Ray's life. And so, Omak trying to figure out what direction she wants to go in, we pick up in the cellars. And Superman, he is letting the prisoners know that while they have been brainwashed, they have been told that these chains, these links, they mean everything. He reminds them that their ancestors, they believed in truth and justice. They believed in doing the right thing. And while Mongol, he may have taught you protecting the weak is for the weak. Superman believes that to be the exact opposite. That protecting the weak, it makes you strong. And as Superman's classic pep talk comes to a close, someone brings in a note. A note from Midnighter. The note saying that the revolution, it starts tonight. Midnighter is going to be moving on the first Star Forge, trying to bring it down and simply saying, you're welcome. Of course, Superman, this is not what he wants Midnighter to do. While the intentions may be good, if the Star Forges begin to come down, Superman will begin to get his power again. The only problem with that, many, many innocent lives are going to be lost with the destruction of any of the Forges. And even if it brought his power back, even if it meant freeing everyone who makes it out alive, he is not willing to sacrifice all of the Warzone lives. The death toll would be in the thousands, and that is not acceptable for Superman, saying that there has to be another way. There must be another option. Wanting to break out so they can go stop Midnighter before he makes this terrible mistake. And so that night, him and Cryolux, they pick the lock and they sneak out. As they make their way through this hellish land, he is telling Superman that you shouldn't be giving the children hope. The way you talk to them, the way that you attempt to inspire them, that these children, these people, they have learned to survive here. And what you are doing, it could cost them their lives. Finding themselves inside a cavern with what they call the Great Worms. And the Great Worms, what they do, they expel some stinking gases that make the atmosphere breathable. As they continue down the staircase, Superman is informed that this is in fact a tomb, with not many knowing about it, and no one knowing who actually built it. But there are stories about a power that is buried here. If these stories are true, he believes that Superman, he can claim that power, get his powers back, and be able to free this world. Superman going over to the stone, recognizing that this is the same material, the same mineral that they referred to as Genesis on Earth. The last time he touched it, he felt a surge of power. Touching it now, he begins to levitate off the ground. He gets super hearing just for a moment. While he maintains contact, it appears to be amplifying whatever power is laying dormant. But having that super hearing just for a moment, this is where he hears the guards, they are headed for the prison cells. Because if they can't kill Superman, they are going to kill those he cares for. Those he stood up for in the arena. The guards going after the young girl and the young boy. Superman and Ux are trying to make a mad dash back down to the dungeons. 
hoping that they are not too late before everyone is massacred. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, at this point, I'm probably repeating myself, but I love the War World line. You know, I've never been too much of a fan of depowering Superman and throwing him into situations. But this one, it really is just the most logical way this Superman would go about handling this situation. I don't know if the Justice League and the United Planets would stay out of it for all of this time, letting Superman know that he is all on his own out there, that if he chooses to go do this, he is by himself. Now, I don't believe the Justice League would do that. I think maybe if they had some things currently preoccupying their time, maybe just for a small while, they wouldn't help him out. But once they're all free up, I guarantee the Justice League would head up to War World to help him out. Even if he did form this new team to go up there, no one's had communication, and it doesn't seem like anybody is really worried about Superman. And I think Batman, of all people, would be keeping tabs on what is going on with him. Because we know Batman's gotta, gotta have a way to figuring out what is going on up there. What is going on with Mongo? What is going on with War World? Because if he fails, Batman is going to have to have a contingency to fight off the armies of War World. That is the inevitable outcome if Clark Kent fails on this planet. If he is kept prisoner, if he is used as a bargaining chimp against the United Planets, Earth will be at the mercy of Mongol. But if we are able to look past that aspect, this is truly Superman doing what Superman is good at. And that is inspiring hope in those that have lost all hope. Not only that, it's taken him away from Earth and all of the problems at Earth, and now his life is a one-track mind. It is to survive. It is to get these people to find the hope and rise up for themselves, to fight back against their chains, to fight back against Mongol, and find your freedom. It will also be interesting to see how this plays in to the entirety of the, the death of the Justice League. Maybe they're just going to assume he's dead. Maybe Mongol is going to make a big propaganda speech to the United to the United Planets, making it look like this Superman is dead. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you have not yet, do me a favor. Hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.